I have no idea why this book exists. Deep Trouble 2, aside from the characters, has almost nothing to do with the original. There are no mermaids, no double-crossing assistants, just plankton. Magical plankton. We catch up with Billy, Sheena, and their uncle, Dr. Charles Deep, aka Dr. D, aka Dr. Dick, one year after the events of Deep Trouble 1. Billy and Sheena are still up to their mischievous ways, pulling pranks on each other, but the laughs end when they begin encountering gigantic fish in the part of the sea they're exploring. By the time they realize that the gigantic fish are tied to the plankton samples Dr. Dick gathered, they are visited by an evil scientist named Dr. Ritter and his two evil henchmen. Dr. Ritter explains that the magical plankton he concocted are part of his nefarious plan to end world hunger by enlarging fish to enormous proportions. Once he finds out that the Deep family is aware of the plankton, Dr. Ritter naturally concludes that they all have to die. This whole book is so convoluted, it's just a mess. The Deeps escape from Dr. Ritter via lifeboat and wash up on a remote island. They spend all of two seconds here before they're rescued by dolphins that have the wherewithal to take the crew back to their boat. What? And how do they overtake Dr. Ritter? Well, realizing he's about to be overpowered, he drinks some of the plankton knowing they'll permanently turn him into a fish and swims away. And that's deep trouble too. What a piece of shit. When I read the title of book number 59, I almost groaned out loud. Another haunted school story? Just ghosts in general with this series. 59 books in and I'm getting worn out on them. Same thing with camp stories. My god, if I see another one of those, I'm throwing it straight into the garbage. Thankfully though, The Haunted School has a pretty good twist around halfway through. It follows a kid named Tommy Frazier and his friend Ben Jackson. Tommy's the new kid at school, and in order to acclimate himself, he decides to help out with the upcoming school dance. It's during this time that he finds out about the Lost Class of 1947, a group of kids who mysteriously vanished after having their school pictures taken. What happened to them? Tommy and Ben find out when they are off looking for supplies. They step into a sideways elevator that transports them to a strange realm called Grey World, so named because everything is in black and white. There they meet a kid named Seth and his friends, who are part of the missing class of 47. Seth explains that after a photographer named Mr. Chameleon snapped their pictures, the kids were all inexplicably transported here, where they all began to gradually lose their color. They also appear to be immortal, as even though 50 years have passed, they're still kids, but some of them have gone insane Lord of the Flies style. Tommy and Ben are of course confronted by these psychotic kids, who are enraged that the pair still have their color. Eventually, a girl from the real world steps off the sideways elevator named Thalia, who says she escaped Grey World when she drew on a wall with her lipstick that had retained its red color. Though she came back to the world she once knew, she still remained colorless, and had to apply makeup to herself every day just to fit in. She helps Tommy and Ben escape, but remains behind as she realizes that the Grey World is her home now. Now how about that for some good storytelling? Like I said, this one surprised me, and maybe it's because I dreaded having to read another ghost story, but it grew on me pretty fast, to the point now where I consider it one of the stronger Goosebumps titles. R.L. Stein, if you wanted to bring this one back for a sequel, say maybe the crazy Grey World kids steal Thalia's lipstick and try to cause trouble in the real world, I wouldn't stop you. 